February 2nd, 1966. I'd been in the polygraph field full time for 18 years. And this particular morning, I had been working all night in the laboratory and uh, had decided to water a plant in the lab, very similar to the plant uh, here, Dracaena cane plant. My thought was that as the moisture arrived to the leaf of the plant, I should, uh, the plant should be a better conductor and I should get a reading on the chart. Well, strangely enough, I didn't get this at all. And uh, in fact, it did just the opposite. Instead of, uh, the, instead of the tracing edging upward as it should have on the chart, it uh, went into sort of a wild excitation, very similar to the, the first part of a human taking a polygraph test. But then it occurred to me, just about 14 minutes along, what would be the real optimum threat to the well-being of a plant. In fact, the imagery of fire entered my mind, and I not only thought, but I fully intended to burn the very leaf that was being tested with a match. Now, I had no matches in the room at the time, and uh, I don't smoke, and I had to go next door to my secretary's area to, to, to get a match. But the interesting thing is that right at the split second that that imagery of fire entered my mind, the tracing reflecting the changes in the plant just went right off the top of the page. And the only thing that occurred at that time, no lighting of a match, nothing else, merely the imagery of fire. And I must say that as of 14 minutes along in that initial observation on the morning of February 2nd, 1966, my life just hasn't been the same. During the next six hours, at some undetermined moment chosen by a randomizer, these brine shrimp will fall to their deaths in boiling water. In another room, completely separate from his laboratory, Baxter has placed a philodendron plant, a polygraph, and a videotape recorder. Carefully, he places a leaf between a pair of electrodes that will monitor the electrical activity of the plant. For the automation of this experiment to be successful, I have to get a certain distance away from my lab so that my consciousness won't affect the results. The results of each night's work must be carefully analyzed and recorded. In spite of his high percentage of successful results, only a few daring individuals from the scientific establishment have come forward with offers to replicate his experiments or test his results. The great majority are content simply to condemn his efforts without taking the trouble to investigate their validity. A few brine shrimp die and a plant feels their death. I think it's the, the smallest of the event that makes it so significant. It means that even on the lower levels of life, there's a profound consciousness or, or an awareness that binds all things together. As you can see, we have a normal you know, copper screen and such as that Faraday cage, block out electromagnetic signals, radiations. But in addition to that, we have a uh, plexiglass over here that blocks the wind movements and ion movements and air flows that would you know shake the plant, cause you know, abnormal signals. Uh, we also have a motion detector in here which will uh, allow us to look and see whether any external motions or movements have interfered with the experiment so we can tell when the plant is actually vibrating. Where's the subject with respect to the cage now? Well, we're going to seat him all within a few feet of the cage, probably about five feet, and he'll be viewing a screen and we'll be watching a stimulus movie that we're providing mm -hmm. and then his emotional responses should carry over into the cage here and affect the plant.
Not that one. He's doing real well with that image. That looks very convincing. I have to think about that one. Well, let's say that the experiment is quite well done. Yeah. Then you're claiming that the individual's response is producing some kind of energy display. When you're finish analyzing your data and it supports your contentions, you can imagine what Im importance this will be. You can imagine the It'll change our whole picture of how we relate to plants, that we're interacting with them all the time. Dr. and Mrs. Kenneth Hashimoto. Relying on her affinity for plants, Mrs. Hashimoto looks forward to actual conversation with her cactus. Convinced that it possesses an intelligence, she is determined to teach it the Japanese alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Research conducted in the Soviet Union leads scientists to believe that plants may think. Attached to delicate electronic instruments, a cabbage plant registers annoyance to the exhaling of tobacco smoke on its leaf surfaces. A scene familiar in any kitchen takes on special importance in this experiment. In some mysterious way, the plant which is attached to the instrument is able to feel the mutilation of its comrade. In a more advanced experiment, technicians were asked to pass through a laboratory containing two living cabbage plants. One of the subjects has been instructed to destroy the plant which is not attached to the electronic instruments. Hours later, the technicians are asked to return to the scene of the crime. The evidence is clear. The remaining plant has correctly identified the assailant. Since 1959, the Academy of Sciences of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics has advanced research for the application of automation and cybernetics in plant husbandry. Connected to electronic instrumentation, these plants express their wishes directly, without the need of human guidance. In agricultural centers of the future, plants will show themselves to be fully rational beings, controlling their intake of water and nutrients, and even regulating the temperature and humidity of their environment. We're just beginning to understand the language of plants. It is a difficult and fascinating road, wherein a multitude of surprises await. I started my work on plants in 1962, while I was an, en an engineer in the uh, aerospace industry. And at that time, it was one of our goals to develop uh, jam-proof uh, missile components. Now, uh, after much uh, experimentation, my attention turned to uh, living plant material, and in particular to plant leaves. As time went on, and I experimented with these uh, various plants and plant leaves, I noted very unusual reaction patterns. Now, at that time, I thought that my equipment was defective. It did not occur to me that I was witnessing a profound consciousness in these living plants. But I was an engineer, a nuts and bolts man. I needed to perfect a machine-based system just for the specific purpose of uh, finding out the truth about consciousness in plants. And to my extreme surprise, it worked. There is indeed a consciousness in the plant uh, kingdom.